Hello and welcome to another Raggy's Beers, Wines and Spirits review and if I look funny I'll tell you the reason why in a minute. So, I'm going to be reviewing Exmoor XPA, um, a golden hoppy ale it says, 4.5%, yep, and uh, it says here, originally brewed to celebrate the 35th birthday of Exmoor Ales, the company making it. XPA is an easy drinking 4.8% golden hoppy beer that uses two American hops, Willamette and Cascade, with two traditional English varieties, Fuggles and Goldings, all of which marry together, delivering fresh, refreshing citrusy orange jelly notes on the nose, while the palate is a bittersweet bonding of more juicy citrus and hints of berry before a dry, grainy, bitter finish. So, yeah, uh, my eye. So, I do an old ladies every other Saturday, a uh, garden, and I was reducing the size of the chuffing edge. First started using loppers, but it was easy enough to cut through with my shape, with my edge trimmers. And I'm there, and this is why you should wear safety goggles. And even for you know an expert, I'm going along the top like that, and I must have caught this one fucker of a of a twig or something. And it, it flew straight into me, I smacked me in the eye. I'm, like, I'm staggering, because, you know, the eye is not a good place to be hit, you know, by anything. And I've got a right red mark just here somewhere. And it's painful, to say the least. And uh, it's funny, because since then I felt sh rubbish all day. And that was about oof, uh, nearly four hours ago now. So, first thing I get from this, from the aroma, traditional beer, you know. It's got a traditional malty aroma straight away. Never had anything from Exmoor Ales before. I've just been looking at their site. They've got quite a few beers on their site, you know. I like anything. You know, if I was travelling the country, wow. It'd cost me a fortune, because I'd be out of pocket. So, uh, golden pour, good lacing and carbonation, uh, just a tad off white head, good centimetre head on it, looks the part doesn't it? So, put the bottle down somewhere. I use Instagram to take photos of the bottles and I haven't been doing it for the last week so I've got a build up of cans and bottles that I need to offload to the bin after I've took photos. It's another way of um, advertising the site, you know, through social media channels. They all do it these days, you know, so jump on the bandwagon as it were. Straight away, where it says refreshing citrusy orange, definitely on the taste, straight away, you know, lovely. So it's weird because I'm looking back at myself and I'm thinking it was it was that eye, but obviously you spin it round, it's that eye, but yeah, it's sore. That is nice, you know, it's got a nice dry finish to it. It's citrusy, but not in a way, you can pick out the citrus and the orange, but not in a way where it's, you know, hoppy, even though there's hops in it, you know, as there always is with everything. Um, for me, a good traditional pub beer. Um, So this Exmoor, they got loads of beers. Exmoor and oh, Hound Dog, four percent light and first quenching. Silver Stallion, four point three percent chestnut coloured beer. Wildcat, four point four percent a single optail. Xmas, a full bodied season layup, five percent. 
Ram, 3.5%, a light golden ale with bold character. Exmoor Ale, the classic one, 3.8%. Exmoor Fox, 4.2%. Cunningly Crafted Ale. Exmoor Gold, the original golden ale, 4.5%. Exmoor Stag, naturally strong bitter, 5.2%. Exmoor Beast, the dark side of the moor, 6.6%. I'd like to try that. Exmoor Dark, 4.2%. E and uh, yeah, Exmoor Ant left on that one. So yeah, quite a few beers from these people. Um, I see they've got an online shop. Ah, uh -huh. Ooh, pricey gift pack. 10 litre poly pins from 35 quid. There's the only diner. You can't buy the chuffing bottles. Uh, they're all 2 quid and upwards from the shop. They're even doing gin as well. In that thing these days, you know, for all these uh, breweries now, they're all producing a bit of gin on the side. Because obviously, if you've got the ability to do beer, you know, doing the distilling is not much different, you know. Uh, I presume anyway. And got bar runners, bar towels, baseball cap, and what's on the second page out of curiosity? Bottle openers, fleece line jackets, a glass, five quid for an half pint glass. Ooh, that's pricey. Key rings, polished shirts, sweatshirts, nice sweatshirts. Uh, tankards for nine quid and half pint seven quid. Tulip glass. So, yeah good range of stuff there you know I mean if, if I was going to ooh, have my own company you, you'd want to be diversifying wouldn't you but I'd always have a mixed case if anybody from Exmoor watches this a mixed case with one of each of each of your range you'll sell because con um, beer collectors like myself uh, with dodgy eyes uh, beer collectors want to try out beers obviously and one of each of all your beers and even any seasonal ones you can chuck in as well you know even if they come in a plastic bottle you know and uh, with not so much um, not the full amount of bump on it you know just to say that what it is uh, for me wow you know um, that's where a lot of breweries just aren't expanding their you know their selling range enough in my opinion anyway so finally the sun decides to show up about time it's absolutely freezing I've got a jumper on and uh, I've got home from there I don't know if it's because it's getting smacked in the eye whatever that's all to do with it but I felt crap since then I've put a jumper on because I'm freezing so yeah, very nice, very, not a fast drinking beer, you can't make this, taste, there's lots of taste to it on the front, the end, on the back end, and uh, it's uh, a beer to save you. Now I'm going to get back into home brewing, um, probably tomorrow, do a couple of new videos, and um, I've got, I'm going to buy... Uh, a velvet stout kit from Wilco's and I'm going to brew that and either midway through the brew I'm going to add two litres of syrup strawberry syrup to you know to make it a strawberry stout or I'm going to add it at the end not decided yet which is the best route to go because two litres of syrup is quite a bit of syrup and you add that to the brew, it might make the brew even bubble up even more and make the alcohol content go up. So that might be an interesting thing. If I add it to the end, will it make it too syrupy, too too strawberry? You know, because you don't want to be choking on the strawberry, do you? Um, I'm not sure. I think I might add it to the brew uh, once I know it's once it's bubbling away like a nutter. And because uh, I, I presume there's some preservatives in it, so it might kill the yeast, which we don't want. But uh, yeah, get a good strawberry taste going. It's an experiment, you know. I've already bought the syrup that cost me three quid for two bottles, so I was happy with that. It was a best before date had gone, but I don't care about that. And also this weekend, I'm going to do a prune juice wine kit. 
And what that is, um, yeah, prune juice wine kit. Um, uh, I have a four or six litres of prune juice in cartons, four to or six bags of sugar. I've not made my mind up yet. I've got to do the costings. Um, obviously yeast and uh, see how it goes from what people have been telling me sit on the internet from reading other posts is that um, the prune juice somebody's made it and uh, it wasn't sending them to the bog all the time which toilet uh, which obviously you don't want you, know, you want to be drinking a glass of wine the next minute you're on the toilet and woof you know releasing the uh, the brown fountain um, but they said once it matures it actually goes very plummy because obviously prunes are dried plums which I didn't know that actually to be fair and if I've got that wrong I do apologise but yeah as far as I remember prunes are dried plums so is it a great way of making a plum wine you know without paying for or going out and buying loads of plums um, interesting very interesting And could I use that to do a plum stout, even? Because if it works on... If the prune juice works with the wine, then surely if I add it to a, a stout kit, I can get plum stout. Any own brewers who watch these videos, please um, share your thoughts on that, you know. Because yeah, obviously all own brewers experiment. I've got a friend, uh, it doesn't work at me. He works at my old workplace, but he started his 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 home brewing, and he was experimenting with every single brew, more than what I've ever done. So, I've also got me uh, pumpkin spice uh, syrup in the background, and I'm thinking again another stout or probably a little winter warmer beer, and adding the pumpkin spice syrup to that brew as it's going. But that's for another time, you know. That's for one of my winter brews. I dare say I'll do a few brews before Christmas, you know, I want a decent wine. I treat myself to a, probably a Barola kit, because that's probably my favourite kit. Um, but it's 40 quid a kit, so it's not cheap. And the, the best kit, I'm, I mean, I love Amarone, but you're looking at 75 quid. And uh, it's pricey, isn't it, you know? I mean, you're talking the, the best quality, yeah. But it is pricey, you know. You do not want anything to go wrong with a £75 kit. Because you can buy six bottles, six or seven bottles for that anyway, you know. So this, um, still good lacing and carbonation. There's complexities that you don't get in what I would call a, uh, a pub beer, traditional beer. So... But it's very nice for what it is, you know. I, I'm liking, yeah. Um, again, it's one of them beers because I've never heard of it, and you know, you read pale ale and you think, mm, and then you're drinking it, and it, and it's, it surprises you how good it is, you know. Definitely never pays, never pays to write something off before you've tried it. That's what I think anyway. So, so golden pour, uh, good lacing and carbonation, a white foam head, orange malts on the nose, orange citrus on the taste, dry finish, um, a drink, a, a pint with some good complexities in, in the taste. Um, and overall quite decent out of five then mm. whilst being nice it's it's not my type of beer if I'm being perfectly honest but I respect decent beers obviously um, I'm going to give it a 4.3 out of 5 that was really nice I can't wait to try some more from them if I ever get anywhere near Exmoor or if they bring out a mixed case you never know right then thanks for watching See you soon.